Good evening, everybody. I know it's been a while since I have made a uh, Tesla video, not counting the April Fools one, which um, I actually got death threats because of my April Fools uh, Tesla joke. Um, I thought it was kind of funny, but then I have a sick sense of humor. Anyways, um, I'm gonna try and catch up. I have a laundry list of video requests and uh, I'm going to try and start hitting on those again. Now the reason I really have not been getting to those requests lately is um, most of you remember I did that little trip to Niagara Falls. Well, I'm almost done editing all the video and pictures from that trip. And uh, I think it's coming out to about an hour and a half long video. Uh, pretty much all I got left is to do the voiceovers in some areas explaining what it is, history, what's going on, and uh, why I was getting arrested. But uh, spoilers, spoilers, we'll save that for the Niagara Falls video. So uh, tonight we have a request by Mark I. And um, basically he is asking, um, or wanting me to explain a little more um, there's been some complaints about bra the brakes on the Model S not working very well and being a safety hazard because of how infrequently they are used and the pedal placement being uh, making it easy to accidentally press both pedals and make the Model S and the Model S does not cut power off if the brake pedal is pressed first and then the accelerator. Um, I will try to explain some of this and um, maybe even do a little demo on it. Uh, it is nine o'clock and you can hear probably hear midget number one snoring back there over to my right. And midget number two is running the iPad. What letter is that? Is that A? He's learning his letters. So first off explaining the brakes. Now it's mostly and people wonder why I'm always tired how can you sleep with a little six-year-old snoring that loudly in the room next to you? Anyways, most of you know the Model S has very strong regenerative braking, which currently goes up to 60 kilowatts. That is a lot. And because of that, you could actually do single pedal driving for 99.999% of all your driving. Uh, it's only that last two, three, four, five miles an hour they actually need to hit the brakes to come to a complete 100% stop. Uh, and because of that, your regular brakes aren't being used very often. Well, apparently um, that is bringing up some concerns. Also, there were some concerns that when you hit the brake pedal, uh, it goes, it's ineffective. You have no stopping power whatsoever. Uh, first, let's start off with ineffectiveness due to how infrequently you use the brakes. Um, despite what people think, your brakes are getting, at least the rears, are getting used quite a bit more than you realize. Now, the Model S has actually six calipers. Four hydraulic for normal daily use and two electronic actuated. And those are for your parking brake. So every time you put the car into park, it is contacting the rotors. And if you're moving even a little bit, that's still cleaning off any rust or any buildup that is accumulating on those rotors. Uh, now, even if, if you make sure you're at a 100% stop, remember you are using your regular brakes even a little bit. It doesn't take much to clean off your discs, especially when you're driving a 5,000 pound car and I suppose fully loaded, maxed out, um, I think this is up to like 58 or even 6,000 pounds uh, full passengers, luggage, so on and so forth. Uh, you really, the pr amount of pressure that's being put on these discs and on the pads is not going to be affected too much by rusted out rotors. I'll give you an example. My electric Alfa Romeo, which is uh, now sold, that was my predecessor to the Model S. And yeah, I built the electric Alfa Romeo conversion product project. Uh, that was a garage car. The rotors 
were rusted to royal hell. I didn't even have a brake booster in there, just straight whatever pressure I'm putting on the pedal is what it was using to stop the car. And I could stop that thing on a dime, no problem whatsoever. And like I said, rusted to hell rotors. Um, I did spray them off, got rid of any oil or contaminants like that that were on them though, but it worked. Just, just the sheer pressure that your calipers are putting on that disc will stop the car. Plus, if you make an addition, you have regenerative braking. You combine both the massive, massive, I believe they are Brembo's, so uh, if they're good enough for an Alfa Romeo, they're good enough for a uh, good old Model S here. Just the pressure they put on, it, it just it doesn't matter. It'd have to be extraordinarily bad. I mean, parking the car in six inches of water and leaving it there for a month or two months or three months along with salty water parking, then yeah, maybe you'll have a little issue, but chances are something else will be damaged first. Um, so just due to in, in frequency of use, you're really not going to see any issue. Where you are going to see issues, and I actually ran into this problem this winter, uh, it was one of the coldest winters in about 20 years here, and I have the exact same problem now on my Nissan Xterra, which I still have, that's my towing vehicle, uh, my Nissan Cube, uh, a family member's Lincoln Navigator and Lincoln MKT, my grandparents' Lincoln Aviator, uh, hell, I even have the same problem on my 1938 Cadillac Series 60, which is for sale, so if anybody's interested, 10.5 takes it, Motor's completely redone from the ground up. Shh. Want to push the button? Which button? Here. Let's see. No, we don't want in-app purchase. There you go. We don't want in-app purchase. In-app purchase is bad. That's when charges come on Daddy's credit card. He doesn't know where they're coming from. Just like you loading up all those naughty sites and buying access to them. Anyways, every vehicle that I drive now, this the problem I'm talking about is in winter time, especially when it's extraordinarily cold out. You get water on your rotors, and it can freeze. Especially if your vehicle's parked in a driveway, you get snow coming up, it flies up on, into your, your wheels. Uh, you got ice rain, you get water on your rotors, and it freezes. The worst this has ever happened to me, I left work one night with my truck, and... It was uh, about zero degrees out, and I went one block south of my shop to uh, scrub it up car wash, went through the car wash, and it's one of those where you go up onto the track and the, the car wash actually pulls you through the little tunnel, washes your car, so on and so forth. Problem being is when I pulled out of that tunnel and I went to hit the brakes, I had no brakes because I had frozen ice, zero degree rotors, and I just had water sprayed all over them. So now with the Model S, because you aren't using them, them those brakes as much not getting them hot enough to evaporate a lot of that moisture off that can be where a lot of the complaints are coming from now um, I did have that once only happened to me now twice now on the Model S um, and both times it was coming out of my driveway after a bad ice rain and uh, after that what I learned is ride the brakes going down just that just 10 feet was enough to clean them off but it's that that anxiety you get when you hit the pedal and realize you're not slowing down and that was a twofer problem because when it's that cold out the regenerative braking function is also disabled on the car unless say your charging had just completed or you preheated the car um, because your battery packs too cold uh, see my battery care and maintenance video uh, for more details on that that's a little too detailed to repeat all over again here. That's really the only time I had any problems with the braking. Now, 
I'm gonna hit my brakes a bunch of times here. Maybe you can hear it or not. I can hear it. Chances are you're not gonna hear it on the video. Now, another problem, or another, not problem really, but just, uh, uh, just due to being a completely different kind of vehicle, is cars have something called a brake booster. It helps, without going into all the technical details, it basically helps you stop your car. There's a negative pressure applied to this canister, and that negative pressure amplifies the pressure that you place when you hit that brake pedal. And once again, I'm keeping this simple. Now, on a normal internal combustion engine vehicle, that vacuum is coming off your engine. Your engine literally has a negative vacuum, sucking air into the motor. So, a little hose comes from the air intake and goes to the brake booster canister, applies the vacuum, so you pretty much always have a vacuum. No problem. That is actually using a little bit of wasted, what would have been wasted energy, to apply the vacuum to that canister and help you stop your vehicle. Given that an electric car does not have an engine that applies a vacuum always to that canister, where do you get your vacuum from? Now, like I had mentioned about five minutes ago, my electric Alpha, I just didn't have one at all. Or I never had it hooked up, so there's no vacuum on it. Would it have stopped a little better with that? Hell yeah. That wasn't nearly as heavy of a vehicle as the Model S, though. Now, the Model S, you really need it. Plus, it's, you're supposed to have one anyways, so once again, shh. So, because there's no vacuum coming from an engine, there's something called a vacuum pump. What the vacuum pump does is the same thing, cooking that hose up to the intake or wherever the manufacturer of a said internal combustion engine decides to place it on one of those kind of cars. On a, or an internal combustion car. My brain's getting a little slow now. And um, I have seen posts online. Cheep, cheep, cheep. Is that a little chicky? Yeah. Little chick, chicken? Yep, cheep, cheep. Good boy. <laughs> Dianwa. Free cookie for whoever knows what I just said. <laughs> um, where was I? So there is a electric pump, and the pump turns on as needed, which is usually only for a few seconds. If I pump my brakes right now, after about three three full pumps, I can hear the uh, the brake booster vacuum pump kick in. I don't know, about a second and a half, two seconds. Uh, now, because it is an intermittent, it, it builds up a certain negative pressure, and then that pressure, then it it uh, it it stops once it gets to the the, the 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 negative pressure that it wants or that it's set for. Uh, so there's always always uh, going to be it always maintains a certain level of pressure while the car is in action. Uh, now, a few cases when it's not going to have enough pressure, uh, it's probably the only situation is going to be if one, that pump fails, which, um, given my experience with other vehicles that have electronic brake booster pumps, vacuum pumps, has been practically never. Of course, it's man-made, so there is always that chance where it can fail. Um, oh, you guys like my shirt? <laughs> it's colorful. Um, let's see. Uh, the other time is if you're in very heavy stop and go traffic and you're someone that likes to tailgate where you're hitting it, hitting it, hitting the accelerator, slowing down, hitting the accelerator, slowing down, hitting the accelerator, slowing down, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you could possibly overwhelm that brake booster vacuum. Um, I have played around with that on some steep hills just to see if I could, and I think I came borderline to it, but never was able to defeat it. The brake booster was always vacuum. I can't keep okay, mixing my terms. The vacuum pump always was able to at least keep up. Might not have been able to build up the full pressure, but it's always able to keep up and allow me to stop. 
even if that pump goes out completely, you still will be able to manually stop the car by pushing the brake. Uh, think of it, um, if, if, if you've ever done this before on a gasoline-powered vehicle, uh, shut off your engine at the top of a hill, make sure there's nothing around, it's a safe, you know, maybe a roll of road, shut off your engine, and just, you know, coast down the hill with the engine off and hit the brakes. It's going to be harder, but you'll still be able to stop the car. And of course, with the Model S, because we have that... Yummy. Yummy? Oh yeah, she is pretty. I teach my kid right. Uh, because the Model S, remember I told you about that fifth and sixth caliper, the electronically actuated ones. If you press and hold down the parking button, or you can, uh, if it's an emergency, you're just gonna press and hold down that parking button. Otherwise, you can also go through uh, the controls menu and in the category e-brake and power off. Uh, you can also hit the e-brake button there, but if it's an emergency, I I doubt you're going to be digging through car menus on the 17-inch touchscreen display. So, um, you, you, you hit that and hold down that parking brake button, the electronically actuated calipers engage, and you can use that at the same way as you used your e-brake on an old internal combustion engine like pulling your lever up or hitting uh, the e-brake uh, brake foot pedal uh, here you just press the button and the electronic e-brake does it for you um, if you're traveling at a spe at speed and say your brakes are you know gone out say someone cut your brake lines you could use of course give yourself plenty of room for stopping because the e-brake pads are about half the size of the standard brake pads plus there's only two of them instead of four sets two sets instead of four so they're only on the rear and there's only and they're half the size. Will they stop the car going 60 miles an hour? It stopped this car in about twice the distance it would have if I was using the regular hydraulic brakes alone. And I tested that when the car, the battery pack was so cold that uh, regen was turned off. Um, so, do they work? Yes, very well. Uh, and if you continue to leave the e um, the e brake pressed. Uh, it will bring you down, and then once it reaches about three miles an hour, it will completely engage the e-brake, bring putting you into park, and bring the vehicle to a 100% standstill. So, so far, um, as most of you know, I like to experiment. I like to try and defeat the system, and so far that has not the brakes have not been something that I was able to defeat. Um, I did have a scare one time, it was in my driveway, I shouldn't even call it a scare, where I, I thought I had, um, the vacuum pump had gone out and I lost my braking power pressure. It was of course once again leaving my driveway and uh, um, I didn't give the car enough time to fully wake up, uh, like the, s the screen had just flickered on out of sleep mode and I already had hit drive and took off. and. Uh, the first pedal press, there wasn't pressure, but I did it again, and by that time... Pizza! Pizza? Oh yeah, pizza. Why don't you give pizza to the pretty girl? Pizza? No, that's not pizza. That's a triangle. Oh! You're smarter than that. No, no, that's a rectangle. So, um, I hope I was able to ex explain on that a little more. Uh, now... No? Okay, now the next thing good was job. good job. Okay, high five. All right. Uh, juice? Yeah, drink some juice. Let's see. Next, um, there have been apparently complaints about the pedal placement making it easy to accidentally press both pedals at the same time. I call bull on those claiming that. I have, uh, I wear a size 13 shoe. I'm short, but I have a big foot. Um, and if you want that all bad pedal price placement, my old Alfa Romeo 164, my shoe does not fit between the brake pedal and the, and the center. Uh, 
guess the best way to put it is wall. I have to actually angle or use the, just the toe of my shoe to hit the accelerator. So it's almost every time I hit it, I'm hitting the brake and the, and the, and the accelerator. Um, I have big feet, what can I say? Um, on the Model S, I have oof, two inches to either side, which I think is pretty fair. Inch and a half, plenty of space, and I'll be showing you guys the cam down there in a minute, um, and showing what happens. Uh, so, in my experience, because I do work in the automotive industry, body shops, we got lots of accident cars coming in, and almost every, I'd say just about every time, maybe 99% of the time. Anytime someone says that the car unintended acceleration, it might have been unintended, but it was due to negligence, which has happened quite often. I've seen that all the time. Someone panicking and hitting the accelerator instead of the brake. I'm sure there are some incidents where there was something wrong, but almost every time it's someone hitting the accelerator instead of the brake, a panic stop. Now, there have been complaints that when braking, if you accidentally hit the accelerator at the same time, which I could see, you know, someone going to hit the brake and accidentally hitting the accelerator. And actually, when I fully... There we go. Why don't we move the camera and you guys can... Oh, my... That didn't go as high as I was expecting. I'm gonna move the camera. I'm gonna show you guys the pedal with my foot hitting, hitting the pedal. My brake pedal needs to almost be 100% compressed before. I mean, and this is if my foot's overlapping both the brake and the accelerator. My brake pedal has to be almost 100% compressed before I start to move the accelerator. And so, why don't we show you that first? Okay, focus. There we go. <coughs> well, I'm sorry, I could not afford the 3D camera, so it's not going to be as easy to see. But let's see if I can. I, oops, no, no. All right, you can see. Ow! There's quite a gap there. Here's my nice big size 13s. I'm going to have to move my heel. Heels directly in front of the accelerator. Look, look. I would say that's pretty darn good. And of course, there's nothing. That's just a foot rest. I want to check out those uh, Tesla floor mats. Nice, eh? Hey? No. Okay. Now watch. You can see I have both my foot dangling over both pedals. I'm trying to show you the depth. Now my foot just finally engaged the accelerator and continue to press. Both pedals pressed. And even then, I know it's hard to see, with my brake fully depressed, as far as it will go, accelerator only went down about a quarter inch maybe a half an inch a quarter inch to a half an inch barely gives you any acceleration power at all so let's put the car into drive and show you what happened okay now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a two-foot method here just for safety reasons okay brakes pressed
and we're still we're not moving. Now it will apply some power. Now when both pedals are pressed and the brake pedal is pressed first, it will allow mild, mild power, much, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna really, really stress this, extraordinarily reduced acceleration power. Reason for this being is, say you're facing up an incline and your foot's on the brake, you're gonna need at least a little bit, and I call this hill hold, um, to keep you from rolling backwards as you hit the accelerator. Yeah, the annoying... Okay, there we go. I actually, I took my foot completely off. Both pedals pressed. And no matter what, it won't move. I'm... Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to just lightly... Press the brake pedal, barely pressing. Now I'm gonna very little. And okay, I have my accelerator absolutely floored right now, and that is as much power as it's gonna give me. Let off on the accel. It is very limited. That right there is probably enough. I'm starting from a dead stop. That's enough to give me, oh, I want to say 10 miles an hour. And that was with my accelerator fully, fully pressed. 100%. All right, I'm going to shut off the overhead light here. Oh, there's my little truck that could. We're going to go out onto the main street here. Uh... here. All right, so we're going just fine and dandy. There, that's about, okay, that's about where, as much power as it would let me have when I had the brake fully depressed. Now, say we're going. Let's get a little more power, and I hit the brake. Notice it just cut both pedals are pressed. It cut all accelerator power and brought me to a dead stop. But now, now I have the brake depressed first. Now I can hit the accelerator and it'll give me a little power, which will allow me to ease off the brake and maintain if I'm facing on a hill. Why don't we just go over to a hill now? for a little ride. As long as Sleepy Man there is seeping, isn't it precious? That's my little midget katir. I don't have mouse katirs, I have midget katirs, trunk monkeys, frunk monkeys. It's getting foggy out, a little rainy. Let's go find a nice steep hill. There should be one right around the corner. Oh my. In fact, I would have to say the only problem I've had, really, with lack of using the brakes is they are squeaky as hell. Especially on a moist day. Let's see, how's this one? Yeah, here. Nice thing about driving an electric is we can play around like this at night and we don't bother anybody. All right, I'm holding the camera level to give you guys an idea of the steepness of the hill. So, I'm holding the camera level with gravity. And brakes on. See that? I rolled backwards. Let's do it again. Rolled backwards a little bit. Now, I know the new firmware, which I have not been blessed to get yet, has an actual hill hold function. So I don't know how much this is going to change when that comes out. 
uh, when I finally get it. And don't worry, I'll thoroughly review that firmware. Uh, but let's see. All right, so now I'm going to apply. Now the car's warning me, but now it's applying some forward pressure. Let off the, uh, the brake, and that way I can go forward without having to worry about rolling backwards. Because remember, even though it might be hard to prove that the person, uh, for the person behind you to prove it, uh, if you your car rolls backwards at say a stoplight that's on a hill, or it rolls backwards at all and hits somebody, you're responsible, not the person that you hit. Even though they're behind you, they did not rear-end you. You uh, ass-faced them. See, uh, part of the additional parts of the question was is there anything that I put on? Oh, that's right, I got high beams. <laughs> Forgot about that. Is there anything I use on my brakes to help them with their functionality? To tell you the truth, on the Model S, I have used nothing, not one thing, no brake cleaner. Not a zip zilch zero, other than whatever I use to clean the rims, uh, which I just use on the rims only. But that is it. Um, oops, I was supposed to turn back there. Um, so I don't use anything on my truck. I actually do use quite a bit. Uh, is my truck pretty much only gets driven with a 5,000 pound trailer on the back because of that. And it looks like we're going for a ride. But because of that, my pads get worn down like you can't believe and I get massive, massive brake dust buildup. Hey, that house looks like an exact copy of mine. Hmm, how about that? Actually, I don't think I've even been on this road before. I've lived in this area for six years. Wow. It's only two blocks from my house. Yeah, so on my truck, I spray the crap out of it regularly, once a month at least, with uh, brake cleaner. Never, ever used compressed air. A lot of cheaper pads use uh, still use asbestos. And uh, use compressed air. It goes and, and goes, you know, blows around, and then you're breathing that asbestos in. Bad idea. Let's see. Did I really make this one out? No, oh, 32 minutes. Oh, good. I'm not boring that much out of you guys. Use an iced coffee right about now. Should we go home? Sleepy time. Grandpa's not home. He's in the dozen. He's getting uh, getting some wiring ready for Papa to install those HPWCs at the sand drift. And it's about a month away, but I figured since so many people watch my videos, I'll shout it out there. The Sand Drift Resort in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin, which is the Midwest's big tourist area is having a massive get-together, Tesla get-together, on May 17, 2014. If you are interested in attending, if you have your, a Tesla, whether it's a Roadster or a Model S, there will be charging for both of them. Plus, there's a supercharger 20 miles north of Sandrift uh, in Mauston. Um, or if you just like electric cars and just want to join the festivities, there's going to be a barbecue, and we're also going to go. Uh, it's going to be the big. That's the big automotion car show weekend for the Dells. A huge, huge. Every car you could possibly imagine. I mean, even Scooby Doo's car is there. A mystery machine. Um, and then we're also going to be taking rides on miniature steam trains through a forest. Very, very neat. My friends run that at the uh, Riverside and Great Northern Preservation Society. Anyways, um, that's on the 17th of May, 2014. If you'd like to attend, give me a call, 414-852-7526. Again, that's 414-852-7526 to RSVP. 
Um, I do know Sandrift's got about five or six rooms left if you want to actually stay there. Otherwise, uh, we're going to just have a whole a blast, free barbecue, no charge for the barbecue, only a charge if you want to ride, go for the train rides, which is worth every penny, and I am working out a uh, group discount deal. Um, anyways, okay, just had to get that out there. I'm trying to let as many people know as possible. So if you're in Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, Iowa, uh, I suppose even uh, Minnesota, Michigan, not Michigan, uh, Minnesota, and I suppose some from Michigan <coughs> would like to attend, just give me a call. Uh, so that pretty much, I guess, is pretty much all I can say on the braking for the car. Uh, let's get the uh, light back on here. <laughs> what you doing? Oh, you're, oh, you're funny. Uh oh, spaghetti. Uh -oh. Ah. Um, so, just to recap, at least for hitting both pedals at the same time, if you have the accelerator pressed first and then hit the brake, the car will cut all power to the accelerator. So there will be no go power whatsoever. And it... Is that turn off? Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. CP time. But if you hit the brake first and then the accelerator, very, very, very limited power. Let me turn off? Okay. Very limited power. <laughs> this game is addicting. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Holy crap, I got far. <laughs> so, it's just very limited power. Not enough to really do anything, any kind of damage. Which leads me to believe that, once again, uh, people that are claiming unintended acceleration or hitting both pedals and saying the car isn't slowing down at all. It's kind of hard to believe. Um, I, I think there was also some sort of mandate that the braking power of the of the, the power of the brakes has to be strong enough to be able to bring the car to a complete stop with its engine or motor running at full power. So say um, you, you are driving the vehicle and all of a sudden it's stuck at 100% of its capacity, your brakes are still supposed to be able to bring you to a complete stop. Uh, might not be easy in that case, but it's still doable. Take it as you will, I just provide the facts. And uh, keep the requests coming. I'm, like I said, I'm going to try and fill all those up. And uh, I hope you guys will enjoy my Niagara Falls video once that's ready. Let's see, I think uh, 38 30. I think this has been long enough for tonight. Say goodnight, Gino. Goodnight, Dad. Where's Gino? Bye. Wave. Bye. Okay, good boy. Good night. Good night. Burp. Burp. Say excuse me. Burp. You burp. Say excuse me. Burp. Open. Burp. Oh, you're funny. All right. Burp. We're gonna go Burp. sleepy now. So have a good night, everybody, and see you in the next video. Ah. Ah, where's that button? Shazam.